Hello and welcome to episode 17 of the Comic Book Showcase. My name is Jamie Hari and I'm joined by Mike, Rab, and Kyle. Uh, thank you very much for joining us after a brief break. Uh, we were, or at least some of us, were down at uh, San Diego Comic Con and hopefully uh, if you were there you enjoyed yourself. Otherwise, uh, there's no shortage of pictures and news coming out of Comic Con, so I uh, appreciate uh, taking a break with us. Um, today we're actually going to talk about something that uh, came out uh, just two days ago. Um, and that's uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, absolutely fantastic movie. Um, so we're going to just jump right in and, and talk about um, uh, what we all thought of the movie, some, some interesting things that uh, you know point towards the future of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and go from there. So uh, just real quick, my, my opinion, loved the movie, thought it was very funny, uh, definitely laugh a minute, and it sets the stage for a lot of, we'll call it, uh, not tier, top tier characters to get their own chance at movies. Um, what did you guys think? Any particular opinions, positive, negative? What did you guys think? I really enjoyed the movie, um, especially because this was a lesser-known Marvel comic book, um, and they're really just going with the most recent incarnation of the Guardians of the Galaxy, and it really paid off. Like, this was one hell of a movie, um, and I wouldn't be surprised to find out that the other studios are literally shitting bricks at this one because they really managed to pull this one off really well. Um, other than some minor details that we'll get into later, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was like top notch and they did a wonderful job with it. I agree. It was a lot of fun. It was a very fun movie. Um, pro probably the most fun I've had watching a Marvel movie. Not that they're all torturous, but it was the most fun Marvel movie I've seen to date, I think, and I just loved all the fun. And <laughs> Not everything, but I loved all the fun. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and say I agree with these guys. Uh, for me, this is my first experience with any of these characters, so I think a little bit for me it was a little bit um, like just jumping in the deep end and just trying to get familiar with everything, but I think you know the comedy of the movie you know helped, so I wasn't thinking like, man, I need to catch up. It was just kind of enjoying the movie as it, as it came and, and the laughs and everything like that, so... Yeah, I think you know it was it was good, but I think it was a little bit hard for me to kind of just watch it. I thought for an origin story, they did it really, really well because a lot of the characters, it's like as you were introduced to them, you got like a very little bit other than the beginning with uh, um, the original or origin story for Star Lord, but you really just got like a little snippet of what their background was, and you were just left to accept it. You weren't like given a full out like history of. Like with Rocket, you basically found out that he was ripped apart and put back together and basically this creation. Um, you don't even really get a background story for Groot. Um, I thought it was, they handled it really, really interestingly and I, I thought like they did it quite well. Yeah, there's definitely a lot to talk about, especially with uh, um, each of the characters having a lot more background. Uh, Gamora has obviously a big story. Um, uh, Groot is like a prince from... Uh, Xantha or Xanthia, I forget exactly how to pronounce that, but uh, he's got a huge backstory. Um, obviously, these characters are from the 70s, if I'm not mistaken, mid 70s. Um, and even even um, Tanner Tivan, which is, um, or Tivon, depending on who you ask, um, was actually a character, if I'm not mistaken, from the 60s. So the collector actually has been around for quite some time, has, uh, is part of the elders of the universe. Um, has had a lot of storylines that are, you know, completely separate from Guardians, um, but you only see uh, Benicio on on uh, screen for maybe a couple of minutes. So it's like I agree. There's it's interesting the tack uh, that James Gunn took, and and I, I actually understand that um, Nicole something who originally wrote the screenplay um, had very different ideas for what the movie would be. Uh, it was her idea to actually pick Guardians uh, out of a hat in, in terms of which. Uh, characters and teams would get the movie, but James Gunn, when he got a hold of it, actually basically did a complete rewrite, is my understanding. So, um, uh, don't know what hers would have looked like, but I, I definitely enjoyed it. Um, what did you guys think about um, the, sort of the, the Thanos and Infinity Gauntlet or Infinity Stones aspect? I mean, obviously, probably one of the best and most uh, in, endearing and, and, and enduring uh, storylines of the Marvel Universe. Uh, what do you think about the true introduction here? Is is this this is going to be the big things? How do you think they handled it? I thought it was really interesting because this is the first time we've seen an Infinity Stone itself. Um, previously, they've hinted at these items of power and uh, like you know comic book 
geeks and stuff like that, we kind of see that these uh, previous items from uh, the Captain America movie and the Thor movie are possibly going to be a part of this Infinity uh, Gauntlet uh, collection of stones. But this one we actually saw to be an actual stone itself that you could actually physically grasp. And, you know, that was really, really nice because I didn't like before that we were given these items of power that were led to be part of this Infinity Collection, and um, seeing the, the Power Stone by itself as an actual stone was really, really nice, and I can't wait to see how they pull it all together for, uh, well, I guess what will be in Avengers 3. Yeah, that's my understanding, is Avengers 2 is going to be uh, all about Ultron, Thanos probably won't even make an appearance whatsoever, um, and Avengers 3 is where they tie it all back together. So they obviously had... Um, uh, you know, machinations of this for quite some time now, seeding, you know, the ideas throughout the, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um, yeah, it's it's going to be interesting to see how they tie it all together. Um, what did you guys think about uh, the appearance of uh, Celestials? That was, it was brief on screen, and I don't know if everybody caught it, but they're sort of old celestial beings that, uh, you know, have immense power and... Um, obviously a lot of history in the Marvel Universe. Pretty cool seeing them. Uh, personally, I went gaga over seeing them because it's just like, it's in the smallest little snippet of a story that's being told by the collector, and it's just like all of a sudden you see a celestial, and that's the first mention of these creatures, beings, that are a huge part of the Marvel like comic book universe. And uh, they're almost as important as the Watcher. If I had seen the Watcher in that uh, movie, I would have lost my mind. But seeing an actual Celestial on screen, um, well, even for just that like small period of time, was really awesome. And it really shows that they're actually like taking in the scope of the Marvel um, Galactic uh, Stellar Universe and like really bringing it into play. Do you guys? That's... Did you guys see it? No. Yes. No. I think you're talking about it's one of the scenes during the collector is telling the story about the stones and then there's like this little flash of like the five dudes standing around. Is, are those the guys? Yes. Or you... No, that wasn't, no. The Celestial was the one where you saw the, the big guy who had like giant balls on his body and he was massive compared to the people that were below him okay, and he right completely wipes that. out that whole situation and just like levels Same everybody. Scene. Yeah. Same scene, yes. Totally unhelpful to me as not a not a familiar with the backstory of the Marvel Universe, but I think that's a good uh, thing. I was thinking of like how DC movies tend to shy away from going more obscure or more sort of out there in terms of their references to things. Like they're usually just like, we need to reference only like Wayne Enterprises because everybody knows Wayne Enterprises, but they're never going to say like, I don't know, the Phantom Stranger, or I don't know, something something out there that nobody's ever heard of. They're never going to like just show that in a clip and have people be like, that's a Phantom Stranger, oh my god! So it's nice that Marvel is doing that, because it builds more, it gives people more of a, like a cohesiveness between movies and comics. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I like really only the like diehard fanboys would have recognized that, or a lot of people would have just seen it as, you know, it's a part of a story um, that the collector is telling, but, you know, seeing it on screen and, like, the attention to detail that they put into it was just, it was awesome. So so who are the stars of this show? Obviously, Star-Lord is intended to be the protagonist or the, the lead character, but uh, who really stole it? Who, who stole the show for you? Rocket. Rocket and Groot, I think, you know. I, well, I think a triangle. Rocket, Groot, and, uh, and Star-Lord, I think. Uh, you know, those three really kind of played off each other, and Drax and Gamora were just kind of there as extra pieces. You know, it was it was the three, you know, characters, and then, you know, the other two of the main five were just kind of there to, to kind of push it along. They weren't really the, the show stealers for me. They did a good job of making them, making each of the characters... Each of those three characters very likable. Like Rocket has a lot of really great one-liners. Uh, I don't want to say Starlet. Peter Quill has a lot of uh, really good, not necessarily one-liners, but he has a lot of just like funny moments. And Groot also has funny moments that are sort of mimed. But <laughs> they didn't they didn't play up his uh, I am Groot too much. Like 
I expected them to maybe go over the top with the I am Groot jokes, but they, they kept it at a level that was acceptable to me. And I I think the other characters besides Rocket and uh, Peter and Groot, all they sort of just were dead. They were straight men in ways that were not pleasant, except for that one really funny joke that uh, that they gave to the guy whose name I'm forgetting. Drax. Drax. The joke about how metaphors don't go over his head because he catches them. <laughs> that that pleased me greatly. So on that note, um, uh, I actually thought Drax was okay. He wasn't um, as much of uh, the movie as I, I thought he might be, but he was still definitely a big part. But actually, I found the people that weren't a part of this movie were the bad guys. I found generally there was almost no sense of urgency or sense of importance or sense of um, you know, impending doom with the bad guys. It was just like, yeah, he's over there. He's going to do something bad. We just got to, you know, take care of it. You know, we'll do our thing. It was largely escaping from the prison was more of a challenge, more of, uh, you know, the crisis than Thanos. Thanos was like, he was over there. He was doing his thing. Eventually, we all know he's powerful. If he ever got a hold of one of the Infinity Stones, he would be, you know, a big menace, when we obviously know he probably will. But, it didn't seem to me like there was a great impending doom from the bad guys. All the crises came from elsewhere. Yeah, I mean, like, really, for the movie, Ronan the Accuser was meant to be the bad guy for this film, and without the Infinity Stone, he, like, they really didn't play him up as being as um, malicious or evil as they could be. I mean, perfectly enough, he is, like, daunting with his hammer, being an accuser, but um, it's just like the I didn't like the choice of actors. I mean, I, Leap Pace is a perfectly good actor. Don't get me wrong; he did the role the justice he could. But the problem is, is that Ronan the Accuser is a giant beast of a man. Like he is physically daunting, and not only with his attitude of being like very dominant, like he very much plays up. Um, being an accuser, um, but he just like it wasn't there for me. Like I felt that he, they needed to have someone bigger playing that role in order to make him more dominant and like evil and yeah. It's a it's a problem I find that these bad guys don't. There was there were no stakes for the for the heroes anyway. The stakes were they're going to destroy. Zen, the place that starts with X or Z. <laughs> and um, that's bad. That's bad. They shouldn't do that. But still, why does anybody in the not yet named Guardians of the Galaxy care if only because they're decent people? But I, it strikes me as kind of corny the way they played uh, Ronan because he's He's not like a he's not an imposing figure in the film really and they give him this voice to make him sort of like a he's the bad guy and it's that same voice that like kids do when they're being the bad guy in a mo like when they're playing the movie that they saw it's like I'm a bad guy and I have a slight British accent and it's not a real bad guy voice. Like, it's not like he's not a bad guy. He's just, like, slightly lower by three semitones. <laughs> and it's... It struck me as corny, and it didn't resonate with me as, like, this is a legitimately bad guy. He's just a guy playing a bad guy in a movie. And that sort of took away from his menace. In my I kind of got the same, the same vibe that... Rab did, but I think more so from, from Thanos, because, like, I know enough about Marvel that I know that he's kind of one of their, the big bads of the Marvel Universe, but I think, you know, knowing only that, I think for me, it really didn't set him up as a future bad guy, like, that we all, you know, every, all the fans that expect that he will be, a, you know, some, you know, major player, and I think I didn't really get that feeling, I just kind of saw him as, like, you know, may, at most kind of the puppet master behind the, the scenes a little bit, but not really as a guy that we should fear and, and worry about, you know, taking, you know, things into his own hands for a future movie. 
Okay, so um, I agree, Kyle, um, and Rab, I agree with you both. Um, before before we end this episode for the the week, I'm going to go around and ask everybody a sort of, or of a, a final thought on the movie, whether you liked it and what your favorite or least favorite part was. Um, let's, uh, Mike, let's start with you. Uh, you know what? I really, really enjoyed the movie, and I thought it was really good. It was unfortunate that there was a lot of um, it seemed more emphasis put on the uh, the good guys in the the show and not the bad guys. Um, I would have liked to have seen a bit more character building or a little bit more, um, you know, attention to detail with them. But you know, overall, really enjoyed the movie, and uh, you know, two thumbs up. Lame, uh, but I'm with you. <laughs> two thumbs up. What is this? Is Clint Ebert? Uh, give Rab over to you. Um, I also liked the movie. I thought. Like we've been saying, I think that the imbalance between good guy scenes and bad guy scenes was kind of a disappointment. And rather than rather than increase the attention to the bad guys, I probably would have just done away with them completely. Um, but what I really liked about it was fights to pop songs, which I will probably talk about in the second half of this. Excellent. <laughs> and Kyle, final thoughts. Uh, yeah, I also liked it. Um, I think uh, it was a good, the, the first real movie we got to see where it was more about the comedy than the actual super heroics. Um, it was a good balance, but this one was a lot more comedic, and I, I liked uh, kind of seeing the, the first take on a more comedy-focused superhero movie. Thanks, Kyle. Um, okay, so two things before we go. Uh, first, uh, myself and another administrator of the Marvel database, uh, Nathan, actually had the uh, great fortune to interview the cast of Guardians of the Galaxy last week, and so I'm going to post a link to that, so guys check that video out. Um, and the second thing is a closing question for the audience. Uh, so what second tier or less uh, familiar characters or teams deserve a shot at their own movie? Now that Guardians is such a success, who, what's next for Marvel? Thanks for joining us, folks. And that's a wrap for another episode of the Comic Book Showcase. Join us again live via chat or Twitter next week. Like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter. And to learn more about today's topics, check out the Marvel and DC databases on Wikia, the ultimate resources for comic book information anywhere.